Hello everybody, my name is Heroic Nerd and today we are going to be reading a little Atlas comic special called The Brute. Um, so this comic is interesting. You know how Atlas comic kind of like makes these weird sort of knockoffs of other more popular heroes? Well, this guy is a little bit like the Hulk but a little bit different. He's a little bit like monstrous like Frankenstein. Kind of like the Hulk. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I saw him and I just fell in love. Like, look at this. Look at this cover. Is he man, ape, or monster? Read The Night of the Brute. Yeah, he's a brute. He's a real bastard. But it's good stuff. Let's get into it. Damn, look at all those cops. They can't do shit. That's what I really liked about this cover is, like, look at him. He's, like, got to be, like, 10, 15 feet tall, man. They don't stand a chance. Anyway, let's get into it. Our story begins here, at the limestone caves outside Highgrave, Minnesota, in the spring of 1975. Do you really think we ought to go in here, Ken? Why not? We're explorers, aren't we? Well, here's something we can really explore. Yeah, nothing starts off good when there's fucking exploring. Deep, dark caves and shit. You never find anything good in there. I don't know why people do that shit. But it's awful dark in there. You're both acting like sissies. Yeah, plus it's awful creepy. We've got flashlights, haven't we? Now come on. It sure is spooky in here. You're starting to sound like a broken record, Timmy. This is a cave. It's supposed to be that way. I bet we're the first people to explore this cave ever. Maybe we'll get a medal for discovering this place if we ever get out of here alive. Oh, Timmy, cut it out, will ya? It sure is a big cave. I wonder if anybody... <gasps> What's that? Is it the brute? It's only a bat, you crybaby. Now come on, explorers like us aren't afraid of anything. Yeah, Timmy, stop being a coward. Kin, Larry, please, let's get out of here. That sounds like a bear. Arg. Yeah, or maybe even a monster. Alright, maybe we'd better gasp. <gasps> Look! What is it? Is it a man or something else? What is it? Show me the brute, goddammit. Night of the brute. And then, suddenly, without warning, it is upon them. A hideous thing from out of the darkness. A nightmarish beast from the very dawn of time. Poor little Timmy never has a chance for a harsh fate has decreed that he is to become the first of the many mangled victims in this unforgettable night of the brute. Grorp. D no, he is huge. Wow. He is actually huge. Like, look at that. How He's been living in the cave. Oh, he just, he knocked over the kid. They grabbed him. Look, he, he's got hands for feet, which is weird. That's fucking, that's beautiful. Look at that. He's got a bone necklace and shit. So he's smart. How did he get in this cave? Okay, I gotta, I gotta tell you guys up front. There's only three issues of this. Three, four? No, three issues of this. And I don't think it's gonna, like, explain where the brute came from. I doubt it. I've already been disappointed by Tiger Man. I, I already know this one isn't gonna go anywhere interesting. They're gonna set something up that never gets finished. That's the Atlas trademark. The two young boys stand frozen with horror as the snarling man brute hurls poor Timmy with savage force, smashing him like a rag doll against the cavern wall. What? Oh my god, it killed the kid. The monster, it killed Timmy, run! I can't, I've twisted my ankle. Get him, monster! Get him! Oh, help, please don't! Oh shit. Oh fuck, he's got a rock. Larry runs, screaming from the cave, his legs churning madly as his lungs gasping for air. Behind him, he can hear Ken's blood-curling scream suddenly cut short by the hideous thud of a mighty boulder and the sickening crunch of fragile bone. Holy shit! He smashed the goddamn kid with a rock! Atlas Comics, man, they get me every time. I, are you guys... Is this, like, getting you? Like, that's crazy. They would not do that with Marvel. Not even in the Bronze Age. But what manner of creature is this murderous bloodthirsty monster? Is he man or animal? Beast? Or something worse than beast? How did he come to inhabit this lonely mountain cave? That's what I want to know. I didn't think you'd give me an origin, but hey, here we go. 
Alright, let's see where this fucking thing came from. For answers, we must roll back the eons to an age of great mastodons long before mankind had set foot upon the earth. For those were the days of the bestial subhumans, a span of countless centuries when nature created scores of races midway between ape and man. Then came the epoch of the great glaciers, and as the climate cooled, the great beast men fled southward to escape the relentless advance of towering mountains of ice. With the climate becoming steadily colder and indifferent to the state of living things, who can say why this lone beast creature chose to stay behind, or how he managed to survive for so long? Who can say what beasts he hunted, or what mishap befell him, causing him to collapse and sink into the freezing snow? Oh shit, look at that. Eons passed as the Sub-Zero Ice Blanket moved relentlessly southward, freezing all of Canada and North America, and imprisoning the sleeping man-beast in a solid block of translucent ice. Centuries passed, and still the glaciers bore southward, grinding mountain chains into gravel, creating valleys and great lakes, and carving labyrinthian caverns in the faces of great stone cliffs, and still... The beast creature moved with them, frozen, suspended in his great ice prison. So he's just a caveman? Eons came, and eons went. The atmosphere warmed again and the glaciers withdrew, leaving the great man-beast frozen, immobile in the sub-zero vastness of the Minnesota cavern. Oh, there he is, fucking creepy as fuck. Ooh, what was that? Was that an ad? And that is where he might have stayed forever, a mute witness to all of eternity had it not been for man and the achievements he calls progress. Think this new atomic power plant will have any adverse effects on the environment? Well, I don't know. It may raise the valley temperature five or six degrees, but not enough to make any real difference. If only you knew the brute, motherfucker. But the difference that the power plant made was real enough to the beast man, for as the limestone cavern warmed slowly but perceptibly, the ice mass in which he slept began to melt. As soon as he was alive and free and hungry, he yearned to hunt the great mastodons, but the great mastodons had vanished from the earth. Yeah, look, Atlas Comics. Let's see, they got Iron Jaw, there he is. They got Iron Jaw back there. And then who else? Where's Tiger Man? They don't got no Tiger Man. 21 action-packed full-color comics. All new characters. All new stories. Atlas Comics. The new House of Ideas. Okay, so this I gotta talk about. Because this is kind of messed up. Ooh, I kind of like that one. Look at that green guy in the back. He's, he looks like some kind of plant monster. That one's pretty cool. By the way, I did find the Iron Jaw comics. And I am gonna read those. You know, Barbarians really impressed me, and I want to, you know, read Iron Jaw, which is going to be really a lot of fun. That character was really cool. I still can't find Andrax. If anybody can get me those Andrax comic books, I'll be happy to cover those. But, um, this specifically, what it says here, Atlas Comics, the new house of ideas. Now, back in the day, Atlas Comics was supposed to be posed as a rival to Marvel Comics. Of course, it didn't work out that way. They were a complete and utter failure, you know. Go, uh, go watch my video on the first uh, Tiger Man comic if you want to hear the story of you know Chip Goodman and all that crap and Stan Lee and their rivalry. But this is interesting because this pretty much proves it. Back then in the Bronze Age, they, Marvel was calling themselves the House of Ideas, and Atlas Comics is calling themselves the New House of Ideas. It's almost as if to override Marvel's uh, fame but yeah it didn't work obviously not that these characters are bad I mean look at these guys these are pretty cool but um, I guess, I'm sure we'll be getting into most of these I know damn well I'm gonna look for this green monster here but uh, yeah and I'm definitely doing Iron Jaw but anyway back to the story there were rats and mice in the cave and so to keep alive he hunted them but today he found a new prey Meanwhile, in a local hospital some miles from the cavern. You can see him for a few minutes, Chief Frazier, but I warn you, he's still pretty hysterical. I understand, Doctor. Has he said anything special, Doctor? 
Indeed he has, Dr. Turner. He says that a blue-skinned beast man killed his two brothers in a cave up near Hargrave and nearly succeeded in killing him. But come on, I suppose it would be better to let you hear what he has to say for yourselves. Oh, dude, he's all fucked up. Look. Help, help, run, Timmy, run, Ken, run for your life. Easy, Larry. You don't have to be afraid anymore. You're safe now. You're in a hospital. You know nothing can hurt you here, don't you? I wouldn't be so sure. I guess so. This is Police Chief Fraser, Larry. He wants to ask you some questions about what you saw inside that cave. And this is Dr. Turner. She's an anthropologist, Larry. She studies strange men like the kind you... Oh, he starts screaming again. Help! Run! Like, dude, kid, calm down. I don't know. He did kill... I'm su really surprised that the brute killed his brothers. Like, holy shit. They didn't hold back at all. Because it started off like a fucking Scooby-Doo mystery. They were like, let's explore this cave. And then they ended up fucking smashed by rocks. Anyway. Please, Larry, you've got to try... I'm afraid the interview's over, Chief Fraser. What do you make of all this, Doctor? I see no reason to doubt the boy, Chief Fraser. He has no history of emotional disturbance, and he's obviously been frightened out of his wits by something. What do you think, Dr. Turner? It's hard to say. I suppose some sort of pre-hominid survivors could be alive in that cave, but I'd have to call it a long shot to say the least. Well, come on then, Professor. I've already ordered the area cordoned off. Whatever's up there, we've got to make sure it doesn't get out of the cave to kill again. Good luck, both of you. Uh-oh. It was giving me shit. Scam calls, I apologize. I hate those fucking things. Rumor of the man-beast travels swiftly by the time Chief Fraser and his companions arrive at the cave. The area is alive with frenzied excitement. Boy, Chief, am I glad to see you. We've got the area sealed off, but the way people are pouring in, you'd think this was a circus ground instead of the scene of two brutal murders. Wait, folks. Police Chief Fraser has just arrived to take charge of the operations. Maybe he can give us some insight on the murderous beast man said to be held up inside the cave. So I guess they understand now. I mean, they kind of believe him. They got all these guns pointed. I'm curious how this is going to play out. Chief, can you... I have nothing to say except that whatever is... Whatever it is, we're going to do our darndest to take it into custody. That's all. You want to take the fucking thing into custody? Good luck. And you, Dr. Turner, can you add anything to the, what the Chief has told us? Just that ever's, whatever's in that cave, it may be a greatest scientific find of the century. We've got to capture it alive so that we can study it for clues to the secret of mankind's origins. That's easy enough for you to say. It wasn't your sons who were killed by that creature. Are you the father of the slain boy, sir? Yes, yes I am. And as long as there is breath in my body, I intend to see it that the monster is destroyed. Just as my sons were destroyed. Moments later. There's an open fissure leading right down to the cave, chief. It'll be a good place to drop the tear gas canisters. Good. Good. Go to it. Does that mean you're going to try to trap it alive, Chief? Yes, it does. Now, please, this is serious business. I want you all to stay back and give my men room to do their work. There they go, folks. They've dropped the tear gas into the cave any minute now. Oh, shit. Yeah, look, they fucking made it all deranged now. Wait, there he is. The rumors are true. Oh, my God. What a hideous brute! It's a brute. Yeah, it's a fucking brute, guys. Didn't you read the title? Title of the comic? Hold tight, folks. We're gonna see if we can get you a spectacular close-up shot of the brute. Come on, Charlie. You stupid fool, stay back! Oh, dude, it's gonna get him, isn't it? Oh, but in his eagerness to photograph the brute, a close range. The reckless TV cameraman steps a shade closer than he should have dared. Damn, look at that. All that needs is a nice crack on a monopia. Just crack. Ooh, wham. He shrinks piteously as the brute bashes his body to gory smithereens against the wall of the rocky cliff. Hurry, blast it! Use that tranquilizer gun. Right. Boom, they got him. 
As the well-aimed tranquilizer dart finds its mark, the beast man unleashes a roar of brutal defiance and then topples unconsciously with a fearsome thud. Well, he's not immune to tranquilizer, so that's that's something. Well done, Chief Frazier. Now quickly, get the net over him. You heard her move it. And within seconds. All done, Chief. What do we do with him now? Get him into the van. For right now, he goes to the slammer like any other killer we catch. Try not to hurt him. That creature is going to be incredibly valuable to science. Don't worry, lady. We're handling this monkey like he was a newborn baby. And then presently... What will happen to the brute now, Chief? Will I be able to study him? Well, that's not my department, Professor. I just catch him. The rest will have to be up to the judge. Are they really planning on prosecuting? And so, the following day... This is ridiculous. This hearing has been called to determine the fate of the so-called brute that was apprehended yesterday near Hargrave. Let me speak, Your Honor. I have the right to be heard. Indeed you do, Mr. Carlson. We were all sorry about your two sons. Terribly, terribly sorry. Dr. Turner isn't sorry, Your Honor. She wants that brute or whatever you call him so to, to get off scot-free. Well, I don't want him to get off scot-free. I want vengeance. That creature is a menace to humanity and must be destroyed. Destroyed, do you understand? Mashed to... May I speak, Your Honor? Yes, you may, Doctor. I understand Mr. Carlson's feelings, Your Honor. If I were in his position, I would probably feel the same way. Isn't that noble of you? There's nothing to be gained by destroying the brute, Your Honor. He's not a human being. He has no understanding of laws or morality. Go on, Doctor. As far as I've been able to tell, the brute represents a branch on the evolutionary tray that withered and died. An experiment of nature that... that somehow failed. He's a subhuman creature, more than an ape, yet not quite a man. And as such, he presents us with an extraordinary opportunity to decipher the riddle of our own beginning, to help unravel the secret of man's own origins. I mean, it's not a bad idea, but Jesus Christ. The fucking thing killed two kids and a cameraman. That's, that's a killing spree, guys. Your so-called extraordinary opportunity murdered my sons. Fucking A, man. I'm just saying. I, I, I kind of agree. Like, you're putting him in prison? Why are you even having a trial? Like, the thing's basically a monkey. It's a gorilla. What the brute did was horrible, Your Honor. But when the boys invaded his cave, he acted as a beast would. Out of fear and animal instincts. All I ask, Your Honor, is a chance to study the brute in captivity. All right, Dr. Turner, I'll go along with you, but the brute must remain under careful guard. And you, doctor, are you... And you, doctor, are to retain responsibility for his behavior. What? This is an outrage! I will, thank you, your honor. Oh, fucking A, man. Mark my words, you will be sorry you did this. Somehow that brute will get loose, and when he does, he'll kill again. I 100% agree. I wonder if that guy's going to come back and become a recurring villain. Probably not. In the days that follow, anthropologist Ann Turner works tirelessly to bridge the gulf of eons that stands between herself and the creature from the dawn of time. That's it, brute. Get the tool. Use the tool to get that meat. Oh, it's meat. Ooh, they're feeding him meat? That's probably not a good idea. Haha, -ha, just look at him. He's already smarter than most people I know. They're fucking playing with him. The days stretch into weeks, in, into months. Step by painstaking step, the dedicated anthropologist forges a bond of understanding between herself and the brute. Good lord, Dr. Turner, are you sure that's safe? Why shouldn't it be, Chief Fraser? We're using a beach ball, not a medicine ball. But then late one night, oh, it's the dude, that's gotta be him, that's gotta be him. All right, Brute, that's enough training for one day. I'll see you again tomorrow. Wambus! Wambus. You guys didn't get that reference. Wambus. It's from Bug Snacks. Anyway. And then, see these keys, Brute? I'm going to let you out. Isn't that nice? Arg! He looks like an idiot. I knew you'd be pleased Dr. Turner was careless, you see. She left your cell door open by mistake. 
Soon you'll be out and free to go on a murderous rampage. Won't that be exciting? Oh, man. This, okay, this is fucked up. Dude, this is fucked up. You shouldn't do this. Come on out, brute. You're free. Maybe after you've killed a few more people, they'll see I was right about you being a menace and give you the fate you justly deserve. Why, just look at what you've done to your friend, Dr. Turner. She'll be lucky if she doesn't have a concussion after that blow you gave her. Is he going to be smart? Is he going to turn on the bad guy? But as the brute gazes down on the limp form of the unconscious anthropologist, a low growl wells up in the back of his throat and his eyes glow red with bestial violence. Hey, what are you getting angry for? I'm the one who's letting you out, remember? Stay back. Stay back or I'll shoot. All right. You asked for it. Is it going to work? For a moment, the brute stands motionless, stunned by twin flashes of white. Hot pain as Carlson's bullets smash into his massive shoulder. And then the pain passes as the brute lumbers forward, his lip curled in a snarl of vengeance. Uh-oh, somebody made a bad fucking decision. Oh, uh, what is that? What is he? He grabbed him? There is the unnerving sound of shattering bone as the brute hurls his tormentor against the concrete wall before shambling off into the night time stillness. Oh, he still got away. Oh, brother, I feel as though I've been hit with a... With a gun? Oh, my God! That's Mr. Carlson! He's dead! And the brute! The brute's gone! Shit, where is this gonna go? Like, okay, so he killed the guy's sons. He killed the cameraman. Now he's killed the guy. I mean... Come on. You know, like... Well, when's it gonna be enough? Uh, this lady's interesting. She obviously has... You know, these sort of, like, more liberal sensibilities. She's obviously more focused on progress. She doesn't... I don't feel like she cares how many people have to die in order for her to get her scientific secrets. It's very man versus nature. You know what I mean? And I feel like she's on the wrong side of that battle. You don't have to be a detective to see what happened to your chief. Carlson hit me and then let the brute out, probably hoping your men would eventually shoot him, but his plan backfired... It sure did, poor devil, but that doesn't change my job. The brute's a killer, and that means he's got to be brought in. Dead or alive. Please, Chief, you've got to... Hank, call the state police. Round up every man you can. I want that brute found. Don't lose any more lives doing it, understand? I'm probably fucking up all these accents and shit. I don't even remember. Chief Frazier has told me what happened, Dr. Turner, but that does not excuse you. You were supposed to be responsible for the brute, and now he's loose again. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Your being sorry doesn't change anything. The monster has already killed four people. Now he's got to be destroyed before he can kill again. I, I completely agree. I think she fucked up. I think she was so concerned with getting her answers that she didn't care who got hurt. And now people are fucking dying. Meanwhile, at a small private airport not far away. This is Songboard 5H17 requesting clearance for takeoff. Over. Where is this? This is Minnesota? People don't talk like that. Roger, Songbird. Runway number 12 is clear. Take her on up and have a good flight. Thanks, Bill. Say, Bill, you haven't seen this character floating around here, have you? I sure have. You know, it's, it's funny, like... Nah, what, what do people sound like in Minnesota? I, I don't fucking know. Say, that's the killer beast man they caught, isn't it? <laughs> He's on the loose again. What, is he attached to the plane? That's right. If you see him, make sure you give us a call fast. Look, is that him? Is he attached to the plane? And the plane wings skyward, unaware of the unusual stowaway. Next issue, the brute faces the horror of the reptile men. What? What? That's fucking crazy. Like, the horror of the reptile. Well, I'm fucking coming back for that shit. You bet your sweet ass I'm coming back for the horrors of the reptile, man. Jesus. Oh, man. This is not... This is... <laughs> Once again, Atlas does it again. I don't see why Atlas failed. They've got good stories. 
there's nothing wrong with this. I guess they're just not popular, you know? When Iron Man and Captain America and Thor have decades of continuity and experience, these new comic book characters, I guess they didn't stand a chance, but they're not bad. I mean, they're shadows of the Hulk. I thought for a second there, I was like, oh, okay, he's going to be like a Hulk character. He's going to be a menacing brute, but she's going to teach him to be civilized. And then maybe they're going to go on adventures together. Maybe she's going to try using his strength, but... I don't know, I guess we'll see what happens in the next issue, but that's it for this one. If you guys liked reading this comic with me and you want to read more, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe. I have a Patreon you could donate to if you're feeling generous, but until next time, nerds, stay heroic.